What are we doing here today, bud? This it? Oh yeah, this overpass protest. So this is the first day that we launch of our international balloon fiesta. So people coming from all over the world to Albuquerque. They expect over a million people to come to Albuquerque just for the international balloon fiesta. The only unfortunate thing is, is there's another reason why people are coming all over the world to Albuquerque, that's the way to abortion. And so Albuquerque is known as the way to abortion capital of the world, and so we're just having to raise awareness, uh, shine the light on some of this darkness so that hopefully they say, sometimes they say uh, sunlight is the best disinfectant for evil. And so, you know, by shining light on the ruin of reality of the abortion in our city, uh, we're hoping that um, enough people will rise up, the churches will rise up, a lot of elected officials or people that want to be uh, leaders and uh, want to go to Santa Fe or want to represent us in Congress will rise up and, um, and work to end this atrocity that's taking place. So this is kind of like the front lines here. Um, free speech is such a paramount fixture in America. So this billboard design um, was kind of hijacked from, um, there's, a, there's a billboard that says Chile capital of the world. So we kind of hijacked to say late term abortion capital of the world. It can cost several thousand dollars to put a billboard out, but this is a cheaper alternative uh, to reach people. Um, so that's why we're out here. You know, we just kind of give it all to God. Uh, just pray that, um, that he'll ignite the heart um, of the people that see it and that they'll rise up and do something about it. So that's what we're doing here. That's our prayer. So uh, we'll see what God does. Okay, let me see your sign. That's what the big signs say, right? They term abortion, capital of the world, New Mexico truth. Abortion free New Mexico. Yeah, so people can learn more about what's taking place, all the facts, a lot of undercover reports. Uh, we sent a woman in at 20, I'm at 38 weeks. Um, she, she went in at 37 weeks, but they scheduled her to have an abortion at 38 weeks. And literally, you know, she wasn't there to get the abortion. She was there to help expose the fact they would go that late. And two days after her fake abortion appointment, she actually delivered her baby full term. So we say that literally they're killing babies up to the day of birth in Albuquerque. That's not an overstatement. That's not hype. Uh, that's, that's reality. So people can watch that video at abortionfreenewmexico.com. They can see our billboard. We have a feature there on our website, abortionfreenewmexico.com. Uh, so they can learn more about the facts, about the reality that, yes, the abortionists, in their own words, say that they're drawing women from Afghanistan, Australia, all over the world for uh, late-term abortion. Now, see, they brag about that. They love that they're actually doing that because, you know, when we're talking about late-term abortion, people don't really realize that late-term abortion is where the money is. The average cost of a first trimester abortion is about $600. Um, here in Albuquerque, the price of a late-term abortion, $17,000. So you can see the big jump from $600 to $17,000. So in the abortion cartel, in, 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 in the abortion business, late-term abortion is big business and so you know uh, these abortionists brag they love the fact that they're drawing people from over the world to albuquerque now see what's interesting is is that america is only one of seven countries in the entire globe that has abortions after 24 weeks so canada is one of them north korea china uh, the netherlands um you know vietnam um so i mean <laughs> um Unfortunately, we're a bad company. America's a bad company. The rest of the global community has addressed this issue. And so um, that's why these abortionists here brag about, do, about doing abortions all the way through nine months because, you know, that's where the money is. That's where the market is. They're willing to do it. Our laws don't prevent it. And so on so many levels, there's a lot of reasons what's making Albuquerque known as the late abortion capital of the world. But realistically, our laws allow it, and they have abortionists willing to do it. And unfortunately, we have women willing to come here to have their babies killed. So unfortunately, on the other side of that coin is, is that the abortionists, it's like supply and demand. You have women that want their babies killed, then you have the abortionists willing to do it. So you have will women willing to hire these abortionists to kill these babies. And you can see the poor baby here that was killed. That's horrible. Um, the brutality of the late-term method is horrific. And so you have the abortionists willing to do it. And they cut their throat? Well, on this one, this is this is a baby that came out of Carpin in Texas. Uh, people are more familiar with Gosnell. Gosnell would like break the baby's neck, so he would basically um, slice the baby in the back of the head. Uh, these babies are being born and, and their throats are slit. 
and they're thrown into a, into a dumpster. Into and is that the little boy, right? Uh, yeah, little boy, possibly an African American baby by the features. Uh, some of the eye facial features kind of identify it as an African American baby. So we're talking about racism in our country. We're talking about, you know, the origins of Planned Parenthood. People are more familiar with uh, the nation's largest abortion provider, Planned Parenthood. Their origins are really literally based out of killing the African American population. So in America, when people think of racism, they generally think of slavery. Well, the Ageism. Thing, the thing about it is, is like, once, oh, cheers, 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 cheers. once Abraham Lincoln was freeing the slaves, these people literally said, well, how, what's a better alternative? These, these, these slaves aren't being able to kill on the plantations. Where's another place that we can um, cap, take captive the African-American community and kill the African-American community, strategically target um, the African-American community? So they just took it from the plantation to the abortion clinics. And so they found that uh, Margaret Sanger's on record saying that um, you know, we want to exterminate the African-American population. We don't want word to go out that we're trying to do that. Um, so we'll, we'll use, instead of saying we want to of saying we want to lynch these black babies see that was that would get everybody upset but if they specifically target the african-american women and say come down to Planned Parenthood come get your health care provided by us so instead of saying health care instead of saying lynching they co-opted the term health care so when people think of health care you know this is what they're talking about this is what the health care Planned Parenthood has for women and so um, Anyways, um, so where a lot of the brutality is taking place to children in our country is being done under the term healthcare and reproductive choice, reproductive rights. That's all AKA this. When you think reproductive rights, when you think healthcare at an abortion clinic, this is what we're talking about. Did that baby have due process? That baby was deprived of due process. So that's another thing. Some people think, wait a second, you know, for about a hundred years, what they've done is- Watch out over there, young lady, this picture. For about a hundred years, we've allowed judicial tyranny to reign. So see, the Supreme Court, think about this, courts can't make law. Courts can only interpret law. So already the law of our country, the law of our land is the highest law, which is the Constitution. And in the Constitution, it says that no American citizen can be deprived due process, can be deprived their life, liberty, or pursuit of happiness. And so, we already have our laws that affirm life. Now, the Supreme Court in 1973 just interpreted the Constitution. Were they elected? Were they elected officials? They were, well, they were only elected by way of our president. So people don't realize this. Right. The biggest power that our presidents have is appointments of Supreme Court justices. Now, once a, once a president appoints a Supreme Court justice and they go through the process of the Senate and the Senate puts them in, 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 on the seat, you know, that's a lifetime position. So realistically, a lot of times, you know, the battle for the Supreme Court comes in the presidential races because the presidents have the ability to, to uh, appoint them. You know, then we have the battles of the, of the Senate, you know, which is an important battle, but, but realistically, once these... You know, and what's crazy is a lot of these Supreme Court justices that were put up by, like, say, uh, Ronald Reagan and George Bush, you know, they really haven't, they really haven't proved themselves out to be what they thought, what they, what they claim to be. Um, so, unfortunately, Roe versus Wade has been dominating our country for 46 years, and it really is judicial tyranny. You know, unfortunately, um, you know, our country's been hijacked by the Supreme Court. And it's only been hijacked by the interpretation of Supreme Court justice. Once again, Supreme Court justices can't create law. They can only interpret law. Um, and unfortunately, they've interpreted law um, under Roe versus Wade. Um, and that's what's really created a constitutional crisis in our country. So the, the constitutional crisis that's been existing in our country since 1973 has been the Roe versus Wade uh, uh, decision. Uh, and so, you know, we're actually calling upon President Trump to do a personal proclamation and use the power of the executive to basically say that, you know, hey, the Supreme Court already says that we need to be defending and protecting human life. 
and life can't be, de be deprived without due process. So realistically, uh, Roe versus Wade is actually creating a crisis that we feel the president can solve by just saying like, hey, you know, we're just going to utilize the power of the executive um, through, um, you know, um, the federal government. You know, we could be, we could be having, we could be having Trump use, utilize the federal government to shut down some of these abortion clinics because that they're not um, 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 honoring our constitution. In fact, they're violating our constitution, and by that very um, foundation. We should be shutting down some of these abortion clinics. Uh, but you know, that's that's really only, only the only thing the power of the um, the president can do. Um, so we'll see. And it's the personal proclamation. Protestchildclinic.com. Uh, Father Stephen Imperato, the protest priest, lays it all out there. So people, if they want to find out more and encourage President Trump, you do hashtag personal proclamation. Um, hashtag free the unborn. Um, hashtag um, end. And um, the slavery in the womb. Um, you can use a lot of hashtags like that to get the get the ear of the president and urge him to, 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 to sign the personal proclamation and utilize the power of the executive based on the Constitution, based on the fact these abortion clinics are depriving these babies of due process. These abortion clinics are, are, are depriving these babies of um, life, and so constitutionally they should be shut down just from that perspective. So, anyways, we're just here trying to raise awareness. From the late-term abortion um, capital of the world, Albuquerque, New Mexico, utilizing a, a forum, International uh, Albuquerque Bloom Fiesta. There's a lot of spotlight on Albuquerque right now because of the Bloom Fiesta. So we're trying to utilize that that opportunity, that that, that pulpit, to uh, shine the light on this grave atrocity. And say there's another reason why people are coming all over the world to Albuquerque, and it's not just once a year; it's every day. Okay, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Mondays. They don't care here. And on the weekends, how many babies do you think are late term murdered here in Albuquerque? Well, uh, I mean, the thing, about it is, the thing about it is in Albuquerque, there's no mandatory reporting. But when you're out there on the street, you see, you know, on a Tuesday, it's anywhere from, you know, five to 10, I'd say every week. I'd say, you know, if we just said 10 babies every week. So, so 10 times 52, you know, we're talking about like say, you know, 520. Late term. You know, 520 babies are being killed there in Albuquerque. Which doesn't seem that much, but there's a statistic from the CDC. So let's say that New York, New York probably as far as numbers of babies that are killed, uh, New York probably has the most abortions in our country um, by way of numbers of abortions. Um, but the CDC, so let's say that Albuquerque, you know, let's say New Mexico, you know, say, say, let's say that we say, let's say that Albuquerque, let's say that New Mexico has 3,000 abortions annually. Let's say, like, say something like uh, New York has, a, has obviously a whole lot more than that, say 22,000, let's just say. But the number of, the number of, the number of late-term abortions in New York, the numbers of late-term abortions in New York are like 2%. So 2% of that large number of abortions in New York are 2%. Well, comparative, about eight, eight to ten percent of the abortions that are done in New, New, New Mexico are late-term abortions. So basically, there's a statistic by the CDC that says that the percentage of abortions that are performed, uh, New Mexico has the highest concentration of late-term abortions that are performed in any other state. So New Mexico has the highest concentration of late-term abortions that are done comparison to all the abortions that are done in the state. So, I mean, if you're talking about stats, the CDC has a stat that in New Mexico, New Mexico has the highest concentration of late term abortions that are done in comparison to all the abortions that are done in their state. And New York has 2% of all the abortions that are done in New York, only 2% are late term abortions in comparison to 10% of all the abortions that are done in New Mexico are late term abortions. So, um, you know, those are some of the statistics that people can arm themselves with. Uh, but we have, we have, if you go to abortionfreenewmexico.com and click on our billboard that we have out here, it's kind of like this, um, it'll take you to an article. And then you can read um, Susan Robinson, one of the abortionists at um, Southwestern Women's Options. She basically brags about the fact that they're drawing women from all over the world 
uh, to New Mexico for late-term abortion. So you got to take our word for it. You don't have to take the CDC statistics for it. You can take the abortionists from their own mouths uh, word for what they're, what they're claiming. And so you can find all the information on abortionfreenewmexico.com. Um, you know, pray for us here. Uh, keep New Mexico in your prayers. Not only for our protection and safety as we're raising awareness, but also you know, that the church will rise up and that good leaders will rise up. Um, you know, not just in Santa Fe, but also New, Me New Mexico will start sa uh, sending some some good representative Congress and Senate. You know, let's say that our president wins in 2020. He has the ability to, to put another Supreme Court justice in. We need a good New Mexican senator um, that'll, that'll line themselves up and, and, and back Trump's agenda to get some good Supreme Court um, justices out there. So, you know, pray for New Mexico. Every person in their own states can pray for um, the representative that will send to Congress um, and to the Senate. But we can stand behind Trump and get some good Supreme Court justices in. And once again, you know, we need the Senate to confirm these um, appointments. Um, and we need, we, need, we need President Trump to nominate these appointments. So 2020 is huge. You know, 2020 is huge. Uh, and with the crazy radical Dems attempt at the congressional level to impeach our president, you know, we need a sense of good congressional representative up there to say no to that. You know, to say that's ridiculous. That's insane. So, you know, it's, it's a point in time that we're in right now. 2020 is going around the corner. Uh, but, you know... time that we're living in right now, you know, where, you know, uh, seems like, seems like darkness is just kind of just coming unhinged. It is. And so, you know, we, the Bible talks about this, you know, that our salt, we got to be salt and light. There's one aspect of it, of our light, shining the light on this. There's another the aspect of that being salt in our communities, being salt. It says if your salt loses its salt, then it's worthless. Worthless. So sometimes our Christianity or our faith, if it's not seasoned with salt, can become worthless, unproductive. We're like, wow, I mean, how can that be? Like, in the time of Jesus in Capernaum, in the time of Jesus in Capernaum, You right? may not smell good, but here. Just wear it, it's okay. In the time of Jesus in Capernaum, the faith of the people prevented the creator of the universe from doing miracles, wrap your mind around that. So our faith can become so worthless that God himself can't perform the miracles that he desires to perform. He said, I perform, I just, Jesus said, I desire to do so many miracles in 